Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon, everybody. Today we are taking a look at Tainted Grail Kings of Ruin. This is the uh, you know successor to Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon. Um, it's a standalone um, box. Marathon. Today we are taking a look at Tainted Grail Kings of Ruin by Awaken Realms. This is the standalone sequel to Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon. So right off the bat you probably can't tell um, just in this video but this box is massive. It is you know lifting, lid lifting. It is way bigger than the original Tainted Grail box. Um, I mean almost feels like there's as much content in here as the core box for Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon and the expansion box. Plus we got some other stuff. We got a uh, play mat to look at. We've got some upgraded resources to look at. We're also going to take a look at the uh, update pack for Tainted Grail. So they did the second printing of Tainted Grail. So any mistakes that they made there as well as a oh i mean this sucker is heavy too uh deluxe exploration journal i mean i don't even remember back in that and then this thing is a complete enigma to me i think this is like a you know day one backer thing um, or followed the campaign gift it's a campsite it says it comes with eight cards um makes me think of uh, robinson crusoe but anyways we're gonna take a look at all this stuff let's start with Okay, so I believe I have this oriented correctly. I could be wrong here, but I feel like I remember it showing the the place where you would expand your world out over here, and then uh, a place for all the cards over here. This is the uh, playmat that they came out with for the uh, Kings of Ruin campaign. You still could have picked up the older one, but I believe the older one was just this area here where it was just a place to place your cards and, and kind of keep them organized a little bit, which I didn't feel was super necessary, but um, I really liked this area that, that gave you a place to, to put everything down. So there is the play mat. Before we bust into the core box and get that back up on the table here, I do just want to, I always like to share this because I think this is just a really nice touch that, uh, you know, honestly, Awaken Realms, I feel like was the first company uh, that I, I noticed starting to do this and maybe other people were doing it but you know it's, it's basically just a thank you letter I'm not going to read through the whole thing ad nauseum but you know it's just a nice touch that um, you know they they care about you as backers and, and so just you know handwritten essentially sentiment uh, saying thank you is, is always a nice thing all right here we go so again this this is a beast of a box. This is, you know, bigger than, I'm trying to think, this is bigger than Lords of Ragnarok. This is bigger than uh, ISS Vanguard. Uh, to my knowledge, this might be the biggest box that um, Awaken Realms has ever put out there. So, very excited about what is inside this box. Hopefully I can get the lid off without knocking everything aside. Just barely, we just barely made it. All right, wow, okay. So, first things first, we have tokens for the monsters. I did not back um, the, the monster miniatures packs because the monsters only ever pop up once in a while and sometimes they leave the board quite quickly. Uh, it's not like, a, it's not a dungeon crawler like Gloomhaven where they're always around, but I really appreciate that they went ahead and did this and another thing that maybe they had always planned on doing this, but just maybe goes to show you that they do listen to their audience. Um, I know that myself and lots of other backers, originally the, uh, the standees here had a border on them and they were just, um, or actually they may have just been a white background or something like that. And just the, the monster. And we said, you know, can we get a, a, a nice background? Can we just, Take it all the way up to the edge and they, you can see they've done that here this is perfectly fine for me um, i don't need more plastic in my life 
I'm perfectly happy with standees. I was perfectly happy with standees in games like Gloomhaven and Frosthaven and things like that. So um, let's just take a closer look at this. There's not a ton of standees. So the other stuff that we're seeing here, oh, they are popping right out. So these are, you know, your kind of upgrade uh, pieces here. Uh, I'm trying to remember, were they cards for Tanagrail? Yes, I think they were cards that you just kind of slid under your player board. But now they've gone ahead and put them in here. There's places to slot things. Um, really nicely done. These are these are looking superb. Here is more, and they are, of course, they're double-sided because you have to make a choice. And once you've made the choice for one side, then you can never, you can never go back to the other side. There's all the monsters. Cool, cool stuff. And then this is the last one here. Oh, I don't want to run into that guy. Giant with armor, a giant talking tree, health tracker, and the rule book. Bum, bum, bum. Let's see what it looks like. So, yeah, standard uh, Awaken Realms. Lots of text, uh, lots of stuff. Hefty rule book. But this was not all that surprising. So, appears to be they have. Um, no, I mean, look at that. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I mean, it's exactly what I expected from an Awaken Realms rule book. But they do have a start here guide to unpack your models. I like it. Prepare your markers and tokens. Take a character tray, set up a deck. Yeah, so this is a good little walkthrough tutorial. So hopefully you can play through this and then making your way through the larger rule book will not be so bad. All right, so here we have the Stretch Goals Exploration Journal. So I'm trying to remember whether there's gonna be a wave two for this one or not. Um, as per a lot of other Awaken Realms games, they, uh, they, they came out with the, they would come out with the Stretch Goals afterwards. So this one, uh, I, I don't know whether I should pop this open or not, how, how much uh, secrets it holds, but we'll take a quick peek. says this contains uh, stretch goals box component list okay paper components cards oversized the stretch goals box contains two additional standalone lost chapters a rogue light into the mists and a places from beyond mini expansion okay please keep in mind that both lost chapters are built upon the kings of ruin core rules and the mist is a solo roguelite Okay, so I guess it's all in here. Um, yeah, the rest of this is stuff that we can't reveal, so. All right, there we go. So maybe this is everything. Maybe this is core box and stretch goals box. This says, uh, do not open until instructed. It's kind of heavy, but obviously we're, we're not gonna open that up. This is going to be letters for all the characters. Um, and it would appear to be a map, probably. So yeah, each each character you know has a little letter that their predecessor or their mentor or someone has left them, and then each person 
yet gets a map. These are all the same. But here is the map essentially. And you had something like this for Fall of Avalon too, but it only helped you so much. Lots of paper. We've got the save sheet here so you can write down exactly what skills you had, items, secrets, food, and wealth, numbers. Oh, it appears to just be double-sided, so plenty of save notes. Here we have our status sheets. So these would be one per campaign, not one per player, but every time you, you know, it might say, all right, mark off the next cold heart. And once you get to 10, you, you would read something. But it's basically just a way to keep track of your keywords here. We have a golden book that Definitely has kind of been mucked up, but that's okay. Um, yeah, this is just a fun, you know, journal. Some really cool artwork inside. Oops. Didn't go through that fast, but. So there you go. Way to keep notes. Here we have. So, Lost Chapters, Status Sheet, The Knight's Wager, Quest for Ingrain's Tomb, Into the Mists. Yeah, so extra sheets for those for that expansion content. And then here you have the Prodigal Son Returns, Ob Osberg. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's a different one on this side. Elgin, higher power. Okay. Man. Oh, look, they're all different. Interesting. So, there's one, two, three, four of everybody. Okay. So maybe these are additional save sheets. Goodness gracious, so much. Ah, uh, we have an exploration journal. Don't know how much of that we're going to be able to show off. But this is what you guys came for. Right. Obviously, I've been looking at this whole thing upside down. Nice tray, storage thing here. Lid. I'm just going to set this off to the side because more than likely we're going to save those for last. So, I guess, you know, I thought I had gone for the sun drop, but I guess I didn't. But. I did not do Sundrop for my Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon campaign, and that's because, honestly, I don't think they had Sundrop yet. And so I think since I painted that one up, I was like, okay, I'll paint this one up. Maybe that was my uh, thought process there. Hopefully it was. This is one of the miniatures that you can play with their demo that came, came all kind of broken up, but that's a cool, cool miniature. She's like stuck behind a wall but we'll take a closer look at all those here in a minute we've got some more larger miniatures lots of cards um ooh, look at this fancy thing right here it's like a red decoder thing but it's in the shape of like a dagger or something i feel like this is something out of the dark crystal or some jim hansen 80s fantasy movie here we have some tokens these to be like scrolls. These are runes. Probably definitely gonna throw some wash on those. These are your health markers, signifying your max health. And then some other runes. What else we got over here? We got some dice. It looks like a east, west, north, south die, a d6, and then a d10. All kind of in a bone. It wouldn't be an Awakened Realms game without some red and purple cubes. For our health tracker, little buttons, and some standees. Some large, some small, and one last little thing here. I don't know what this is for. <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. All right. All right, we've taken the shrink off here, and here are the player boards. These are dual layered. These feel amazing. Um, they're just they're nice and thick. 
uh, spots for everything. And what's interesting here is that th this can pop off. Um, now it says right here, place Girdwin tile here. They did this in the first game because basically you could have one green character uh, in the game and you would just pop in the new person. I don't know why it says place Girdwin tile there. Um, and I haven't seen any other characters yet. So, but one of the really nice things about this dual layer system is the health tracker token here, if you're not familiar with it. So you would start up here and you can see that's no problem because her maximum energy is seven. Energy is how many actions you can take essentially on a turn. So the more energy you have on a turn, the more things you can do. But as you lose health, you see this works its way down and say I'm at three health. Max energy I can get to is five. That little thing keeps your energy from going beyond it. So just a really nice system, um, you know, in my opinion. But there's, there's Girdwin, Elgin, Ionis, and Osbert. So there are our characters. All right. What should we look at next? Well, let's let's take a look at this bigger box here. The rest of this. So let's we'll, again. We'll take a look at all the miniatures here in just a minute. So don't don't be worried. I am going to show you a quick comparison though. But let's just take a look at some of the cards here. So here's a, a turn order uh, events. We're certainly not going to open those up. Um, may or may not look at maybe one or two of the locations. But here's an example of a an enemy you might take on. So the, the Weird Walker Turtle. And you can see that um, as he's taking wounds, certain things are going to happen to you. Uh, and then... Uh, loot he would get to food but this is how he starts and again these symbols over here on these cards match up with these symbols so you can see practicality is that what he was going after where's the turtle yeah practicality so if i had if osbert here had one at least one thing in practicality i could make up a pairing right there with uh, another card I have that would say look like this. Now this one isn't going to line up because if you put them side by side, you see they don't line up. But ideally, you're looking for something like that, which would allow you to put a token on the, you know, a, a health damage token cube on the Weird Walker Turtle. And then when he would activate here, he would, with only one or two health, he's actually going to lose one of those damage um and gain right back so he's a tough he's a tough sucker but that's how the combat works each character has you can see this is you know an elgin specific card each character has specific cards that they play for combat and then specific cards that they play for diplomacy which is this side of the board so if you have empathy caution or spirituality these are what you're using in the diplomatic you know the discussions the debates but each character has a unique deck for each of the two different types of encounters. Um, you know, so this would be a combat encounter, but then there's going to be encounters that are, say, you would find in a town where you would actually just be kind of debating with them. Okay, so this is the open and play deck. I'm not going to flip this over, but this goes along with that quick start guide that we looked at already. And you simply peel this open... Every, all the cards are in the right order, and this is what you need to play the little tutorial scenario. These appear to just be uh, dividers, which is nice. A whole bunch of mini cards. These are going to be secret cards, item cards, things like that. Uh, say a lucky charm. We'll show you that one right there. But again, this is a you know a story driven campaign game, so there's a lot of secrets in here. I'm not going to be yeah. There's more secrets. Not going to be uh, unveiling a lot of of these cards here. Yeah, see, there's like a diplomacy 
This looks like a diplomacy card for somebody, but there appears to be some kind of secret on the back. We have large dividers for the larger cards. And then let's see if we can't find... All right, 105, 141, 161, and places from beyond. So, um, yeah, let's take a look at, at this 105 here. This looks like a pretty basic card to start with. All right, so I'm just going to show you this one as an example. Again, flipping over these cards and revealing them as part of the story. But this one is on top, so I have a feeling it's okay. So at first, you know, you don't, you're not able to see much. You can see there appears to be a little settlement here that's pushing away the weirdness. But until you get a waystone settled here in the corner, this card's going to stay like this. And, uh, you know, you gain fear instantly just by entering it. You also, when you play this card down, place 106 and 103 in these locations. So that'll help expand out the, the land. But once you get a waystone in one of these uh, locations here, you can then flip this card over. Now you can see, oh, well, there's the road is clear. There's some actions you can take, um, you know, relaxing, which helps you get rid of fear. Again, this is an early on location. And you can always tell that the, the weirdness side has this more star symbol versus this, you know, I don't know, shuriken or something like that. But... Anyways, this whole thing is filled with cards just like this that are foggy on one side and then more clear on the other once you place uh, a weird waystone, waystone down, which is these suckers right here. Under our next add-on, we have our upgraded resources. So that's essentially going to replace just using cubes like this or like this for your, your food and your magic and things like that. Here you can see on the back uh, everything that we are getting. So this just, you know, there's no, this is purely cosmetic upgrade here. Now if I could actually get this box open there we go okay so yeah we've got money as well did they tape this shut what's going on here that's a decent little carrying case uh, i wonder if this will be able to fit in the box but so here is for example the magic uh tokens this is a single and then this is a, like a five and then we have you know, small coins for single, large coins for five. They're not metal, they are plastic, but that's okay. I really, I like the bread here. So here's the, the like single food, it's like half a bread. And then that's, you know, five food. Then we have our reputation. So single reputations, and then larger banners. And then last but not least, we have experience. So these, these definitely are gonna get a wash, similar to, uh, you know, it's funny, they, they kind of show it with a wash in the picture. But uh, no such, there are lots of big experience markers. There. So there you go. This is a decent little thing. I'm hoping that this will fit in the box. Because um, obviously they put some thought into this. They didn't just, you know, create it. It's even 
you know, stamped on the front and everything like that. So cool. Up next, we have the Deluxe Exploration Journal. So, I mean, this, <laughs> this thing is like, I don't, uh, it's not leather, but it like feels like leather, but I mean, it's, it's something more than just cardstock for sure. Um, and this thing is hefty. So, but it is well protected uh, in there. Knocking stuff over. But let me just see how far we can get uh, to peak. So I believe what this is giving you here is just some more, uh, yeah, pages like this that really immerse you. I'm not going to spend too much time on, uh, you know, text and stuff like this. But this is what you're getting with the deluxe version. Like here, here's two pages of complete artwork. You know, no spoiler text there or anything like that. So there's a, another one again. I don't want to spoil too much, but um, yeah, that's cool. So this essentially just replaces where to go. We didn't even open it earlier. I didn't want to spoil anything, but here's the standard exploration journal. Um, and, you know, it is, is thinner, it is lighter. I probably am not even going to take it out of its shrink since I have this, just in case, you never know. Uh, this will get stored away somewhere and protected just in case I ever need it someday. But this is cool. I like this. Uh, again, this is just a purely cosmetic add-on, but it is giving you a lot more artwork full size page artwork um, and then all the text should be the same so there you go deluxe exploration journal I really like that up next we have our camp um, so this I believe was like a if you were following the campaign or back within the first 24 hours you got this for free uh, it says make a home away from home with the upgradable camp for your characters requires you know fall of Avalon so comes with some cards and it comes with uh, it appears to be sun dropped so I don't know if I uh, you know meant to sun drop my whole place I'll have to check and see if all of this was supposed to be sun dropped or not but here we go we can just place this like this and all right, so I finally figured it out. So start with this big kind of plainish one. This little cooking pot goes over top of the the wood. Uh, if you can see, that looks like a fireplace, and it does actually fit quite nicely right there. And then this last one, these spikes here are going to finish off this what appears to be kind of like a hole in the the fencing there. And there you go. So there, there we have our campsite. Um, that none of these cards tell you how to do that, <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully that's helpful to you guys. All right. Last but not least, we have the update pack. So this is for Fall of Avalon, um, the original game. If you got the second reprinting, all of this is already in there. So this is for you know original owners, original backers of the game. Now I don't think there were any huge mistakes. But let's, I believe that uh, some of what they gave us was, um, so there's some cards, um, but three years of Tainted Grail updates and fixes in one box. This pack brings the older editions of Fall of Avalon. It's stretch goals and expansions in line with 2.0 requires. So I think the biggest thing is the rule book because if there's one thing that was wrong with the original game was that it was just hard it was a slog at some points and I, a lot of people including myself probably house ruled some stuff um just to make it bearable and be able to get through it so um a whole new rule book here i'm assuming a lot of it is going to be the same this appears to probably just be this, the exact same rule book that comes in 2.0 um it doesn't say like upgrade pack or anything like that this pack contains game updates, Tainted Grails, and its expansions. To access updated journals, scan the QR code. Okay. In this pack, you will find both cards from the base game and the expansions. To update your game, replace all cards. So then we have these sheets again. Um, so we saw these on the other characters, and I honestly don't remember what they are for. 
But again, uh, these are all of the old characters. So what do we do with them? Bjor was my original character. I went out with a bunch of more save sheets. These appear to be the same, but maybe some keywords on the back have changed. And then a whole bunch of cards, it looks like. Um, yeah. So there you go. That is what you are getting with the uh, update pack. Again, where'd the, where'd the box go? I lost track of the box. Oh yeah, put it in there. This probably gives you a better idea of what all is in there. So, but yeah, that is going to do it for our somewhat scatterbrained unboxing of Tainted Grail uh, Kings of Ruin, along with the Fall of Avalon 2.0 update pack. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. There will be uh, a playthrough of this, probably a reboxing video as well, because um, there's a lot going on here, and uh, other content. But yeah, this is one of my favorite Awakened Realms games. Definitely right up there with Nemesis, in my opinion. Um, just got to get it organized first. So, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.